Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 film Super Deep. It's a Russian film. It is a Shudder original and it is coming to Shudder on Thursday, June 17th. So for that reason, I'm putting this out ahead of time. This is a no spoiler review. I'll just kind of talk about a little bit thematically stuff and then just some of like the technical things, but I won't give you story really, except for a very small synopsis. Now, let me talk about this. Written and directed by Arseny Sukin. I hope I said that name properly. I don't know. My apologies. That This is this individual's first feature film. And I will say for a first feature film, there's a lot of good stuff going on here that does make me hopeful for this filmmaker in the future. That said, there are some things that are problematic with this film, in my opinion, and I'll obviously lay all that out. I do think there's a good film in here, but much like I talk about with other films that end up having problems with them, one of the biggest things uh, persists in this one, which is it's way too long. It's a very long film. It is almost two hours, and there is not the story nor the characters to hold that two hours, or more importantly, hold your attention as an audience member for two hours almost. Uh, and it's, it's like an hour and 55 minutes with credits, basically, so just so you know. But it's also a very meandering story, unfortunately. But you may be asking yourself, what is that story? So, very short synopsis, because I don't want to, you know, ruin too much. It's basically set in Soviet Russia. Uh, I guess they're... It's been a long time since my, since my Soviet and Russian um, history courses... So it's during uh, the presidency of Gorbachev. So I think before the collapse of the Soviet Union in, I believe it was 1989. So anyway, a, it follows Anna, who is a uh, epidemiologist. And she is called upon because she, her services are needed uh, by the military uh, to go down into a big borehole or, or something that is super deep, you could say. <laughs> um, to check out a situation, and that's basically as far as I'm going to go with it. I don't want you, I don't want too much to be out there because hopefully there are people who end up loving this film because, like I say, everyone should check out every film they come across it and have it a little bit of interest in just to find out for themselves how they feel about it because no, you know, not everyone's going to feel the way I do about this film. Some people will, but some people will definitely not. Some people are going to love this. Some people are going to hate this. With me. I found things to like and dislike with this film, and obviously I'm going to lay those out now. It starts with a kind of odd point of view shot for the main character uh, that, that it does end up moving away from, but then jumps back to it a few other times during the film. Uh, I think this is kind of being done as a way to kind of have the audience connect a little bit more with that main character to get like inside the body of that person and maybe feel a little bit of the anxiety of what's going on or fear or issues, uh, you know, maybe just connect a little bit more. So I, I understand that, but it comes off a little weird to me, especially because it's just used kind of briefly here and there. Um, it's not that big of a deal to be honest, but I just found it a little weird. Uh, some characters are dubbed and some are not dubbed. I really don't understand this choice at all. Usually with films, it's either all subtitled or it is all uh, dubbed over. Now, with this one, there are no subtitles except for Gorbachev talking on the TV at one point, which is a very short segment. Uh, so no subtitles, really, but it's all in English. But a bunch of the actors are dubbed over in English, but the main character, and I think maybe another character here or there, are not. They actually deliver their own lines in English. Uh, it's weird because it creates this really big disconnect in what's going on, especially because when you have translation from, you know, say, obviously in this case, Russian to English, it ends up being a situation where you lose stuff in translation. You definitely lose things. So when you're going from the spoken word on the in the film to subtitles, you lose some stuff. But when you go from the spoken uh, Russian to dubbed over spoken English, I feel like you lose even more because not only are they translating uh, or trying to translate as best they can and, you know, it's not always one for one, they are also trying to match the phrases up with the amount of mouth movement. 
So that limits what you can say even more. So I think for that reason, there's some stuff in this film dialogue-wise that ends up seeming a little weird or a little um, unrealistic and kind of very wooden and stilted. And I think that may be a translation type situation. So for that reason, I really would have just preferred that this film be subtitled. I don't know why the choice was made to dub it over for the most part. And I certainly don't know why they dubbed almost everyone except like a character or two. I just, it's weird. It's really weird and it's very disconnecting. It's weird. Uh, like I said, the dialogue is not very realistic for the most part. It's also very simplistic. And I don't know if a lot of that has to do with translation issues or not. Or just lost in translation situation. That's why I'm saying. Just should have done just subtitles. Uh, there's some real good cinematography in this. I really do like a lot of the visual style of the film. Pretty solid directing. Really good cinematography a lot of the times. There's a lot of camera motion. The camera is always kind of like moving around things and moving with things and moving to things. And I love that with, with cinematography. Camera work, when it's actually like active and moving around, I feel like helps keep me and other audience members engaged in what's going on. Instead of just like setting a shot on people just talking or setting a shot on one thing, like move around, get interesting with it. And this film does that. So visually, like, like I'm saying, visually... I like that about the film quite a bit. Uh, there's some solid CGI in this as well. Uh, I did find some nice CGI, which, especially for lower budget films, especially Shutter original films, uh, a lot of times CGI is not so hot, but they did a pretty solid job with this. There are a few moments uh, quickly that are kind of wonky in this, but for the most part, pretty solid CGI. Uh, the film seems very meandering, and it has a very simple story. So those two things... Not only are those things not necessarily good on their own, but together they're kind of really bad in my opinion. When you have a very simple story that you don't have to explain a lot for and it's meandering and it's almost two hours, that's not a good thing. It feels like time is being wasted. It feels like they were kind of trying to stretch it. It also feels like they didn't know how to cut off a scene because almost all the scenes just they go too long. They just go way too long. And I'll say something else kind of connected to that in a little bit. There's a lot of focus on something. I, I have in my notes what that something is, but I don't want to bring it up because it ends up having some sort of significance. But there is kind of a mechanical something in the film that ends up being relevant in the end that is talked about a lot and focused on a lot um, and there are a lot of rules laid out for this thing, basically. It just seems weird. Not only that, but to have so many rules for this thing, which you don't feel like you should have that many rules for, uh, there were also conflicting rules, uh, which one thing's like, oh, you know, this, it'll take this amount of time for this, and then later on they say something that is very, very different than what was said earlier. It's like, well, wait a minute. It's just, it, it's, yeah. Um, you'll, you'll figure it out, or if you've already seen it, you probably know what I'm talking about. There's a pretty gross practical effect moment that looks good and just so happens is something that makes me severely uncomfortable. Uh, it literally makes me have that feeling like your skin is crawling. I hate that part of this film. Not from the standpoint of it, it, it was bad. I hate it for me personally because of the feeling it gives me, but that's a big win for the filmmakers in my opinion. And in general, their practical effects are quite good when they, when they show up in the film. I would love to have seen more practical effects to this and in better lighting at certain times, but I understand probably low budget, you know, that stuff is very expensive. Um, yeah, so uh, I love the practical effects moments in this. I think they pulled things off really well and big, big kudos to them for actually making my skin crawl. There aren't that many things that do that for me and they had something very specific in here that does that for me and they executed it well it got me. I was, it, I was like, Ugh. it was one of those feelings. You're like, Ugh. yeah, there aren't that many things that do that for me, but it mm. set design looking pretty good. Um, I was pretty impressed actually with the set design for this. A lot of the areas that they end up going to when they're in, the, when they're in this borehole, um, they don't look exactly the same. They have the same overall look, but I was like, oh, the set is a lot bigger than I was assuming it would end up being. And it looks pretty detailed for what they were going for. So, good on that. 
there are some lighting issues, unfortunately. This is something that really bothers me in film when there are things you need to see that are in the dark, but they're not lit well enough so that you can actually see what's necessarily going on in the dark. It, it wasn't one of those kind of like Alien versus Predator Requiem issues because that's just like unwatchable. Uh, it's not. It wasn't t quite to that degree, but there were. I was like, I need to see something, and I can't fully see what's going on. So that's problematic. Uh, they had some lighting problems there, but for the most part, like when the light when lighting is supposed to be better, it looks fine. It's just when it's low lighting in this instance, it was uh, yeah, it was a problem. Um, they too focus too long on character reactions to certain things going on in the film. It turns into a feeling much akin to when you just spoke to someone about something, you guys have exhausted the conversation, and then you're still just standing there kind of in awkward silence. That is what it feels like for an audience member when these scenes go on too long and these characters are reacting to things for too long like that's what it feels like is that awkward moment where you've said everything you have to say to someone and you're both still just standing there looking at each other trying to think mm, is there something we should talk about i don't really have anything but they're not saying anything this feels awkward i would like to just leave and that kind of gets to a point with this film is that there were numerous times where I was like, okay, surely this film is almost over. And then I checked the runtime on it, and I'm like, oh my god, there's still, there's still more of this film? And there's still a significant amount of this film? How are they going to keep this going? And, like, I understand how they kept it going that long, but it's very unnecessary. And, like I said, a lot of these scenes are just too, too, too long. They needed someone who is a more hunker down, get serious, cut the time down type editor. That's the type of person they needed to finish this film out. Um, yee, there's way too much fat on, on the bone. Uh, way too much meat on the bone. There's too much fat on the steak, really, I guess is what I wanted to say. Not like that's an actual saying, but I just did it. <laughs> uh, there's a bunch that happens towards the end that is very far-fetched. And some of it seems kind of like out of nowhere. And when I'm saying far-fetched, I mean like it's very unrealistic that either a character would do some of these things or that the situation would play out the way it did. Um, those types of things. So it takes you out of the film, unfortunately, and that I hate when those things happen. Uh, that's some rough writing. More good practical effects show up at the very end of this film. But at this point, you're kind of over the film. Uh, it's gone on way too long, and you're kind of like, how do I just get out of here? Um, it, it just The problem is when a film drags on like that and the story's not good enough to keep you engaged, even when the good stuff ends up coming up, you still have this overall feeling of just like, just end it. Just be done right now, please. Let's just, let's just call it. You know, this relationship isn't working. We're obviously not really going anywhere. You go on your way. I will go mine. <laughs> Let's end this amicably. <laughs> Just saying. There's something in the main character's past that ends up being introduced very early in this film, but it barely comes into play and really seems pretty pointless once the film has ended because I was just like, I understand what they were kind of trying to do with it, but A, it doesn't come up enough. B, it's not done in the way that it really feels like it matters all that much. And C, like, in the end, I, I thought there was going to be, like, a much bigger focus on it, like, in the very end to, like, bring it full circle. And it just, like, it just got dropped, basically. I was like, I don't, okay, I don't understand. The music feels very over the top many of the many of the time uh, at many points in the film. Sorry, uh, because they crank it up during a lot of the portions where they're stretching out scenes needlessly. I have a problem with the score being over the top, and it's not always in this film, but there are those times where it gets very much exaggerated by the fact that you're waiting for them to move to the next scene, and it seems like during those times they just crank up the music. And it's like, this is not the way to deal with this. The way to deal with this is just cut the scene down. Whatever. Just saying. Uh, so in summation, it's way too long, uh, as it's almost two hours, and clearly doesn't need the runtime. It's also too meandering. Um, I don't recommend the film, unfortunately. Although, I say that, but I also said the beginning, and I always say this, 
everyone should just go ahead and watch every single film they have interest in because who knows you know experience it for, for yourself make up your own mind because like i said there will be people who love this i did not i would not watch it again and if someone is coming to me and saying hey i'm very limited on my time here i need you to tell me is this worth it or not i would say no don't do it so out of five stars with half stars in play i was thinking about going lower but i'm actually going to go two stars because cinematography looks really good there is a good story a good story buried in there if you edit it down a lot more and um practical effects were really good so there are some wins for this film and that's why i say that since this is the first feature film for this filmmaker that's encouraging that's good like this is a very good start so i would be interested to see where they go from here but anyway, uh, if you've seen the film, or if when you do, go ahead and put some comments down there. We can do spoilers in the comments. Go ahead, spoilers in the comments. Let's talk about this if you want to. Uh, do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. That is your way to repay me if you like this video or any video I've ever done. Uh, I'm not making money doing this or anything. I'm just trying to build a nerdy horror community here and I keep motivated by people subscribing. So when I see new subscribers, I'm just like, awesome someone is is enjoying the content or it's worth enough of their time to devote to hitting the subscribe also hit the notification bell button because then that way you'll know whenever i'm putting up a new video whether it's a you know no spoiler review like this one or a more in-depth analysis review of another movie or unboxing haul video any of that stuff but regardless i really do thank you for taking your time to check this out it does mean a lot to me and until next time keep it brutal